Hello. This is a video assigned to do to show the different video output options available on some popular RGB SCART compatible games consoles. So without further ado, um, let's get on with the video. Okay, first up of our video output demonstrations is Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Mass system. This is using composite video. And as you can see, there's some slight blurring and color bleeding occurring just on the title image. And again on the map, you can see some blurring occurring on the text. And you can see some color bleeding occurring on the green. So this is creating a graphical distortion with some of the geometry for the sprites. And again with the totem pole. And now we have our first RGB output source, which is using a sync on composite video. So this is taking the composite video source and generating a sync source from that. This does have some drawbacks though. We can see now we've got quite a lot of noise occurring, which is this crosshatch and stair step effect occurring. Typically it happens more on the blues with the Sega Master System. Again, we can see that it's very evident there. And unfortunately, this is one of the more common configurations of RGB SCART cable you can get, especially on the cheaper cables. Next, we have RGB Composite Sync. So this is using a separate sync source, which comprises of just using the horizontal and vertical sync information, hence the name Composite Sync. You'll find here that there is no noise being generated for the picture, so it's just as it is originally intended, and this provides the best quality image. As you can see, there's no graphical distortion, there's no noise, it just looks brilliant, which is actually very impressive for a console this old. So here's a composite aha, of all three video outputs together. Composite video on the left, RGB sync on composite video on the middle, and RGB composite sync on the right. As you can see, the blurring that occurs with composite video is very evident when compared next to the other two RGB sources. As you can see, the uh, palm trees distorting as they go from the RGB sync on composite over onto the composite video. RGB Composite Sync providing the best quality output of the three. Next we have Sega's Arrow Flash for the Sega Mega Drive. And we can see already the Composite Video source is providing some distortion. The Mega Drive's Composite Video encoder is notorious for providing things like jail bar effects where the distortion is occurring on the video output. It's due to interference, mostly on the actual Mega Drive PCB itself. And you can see the RGB composite sync source on the right hand side does not suffer from these issues. I typically find such gel bar effects occurring mainly on darker colours, especially dark blue and dark black. It's a different issue than what occurs to the RGB um, sync on composite video. As you can see, there's quite a difference between the two in terms of picture quality and sharpness. Some consoles, specifically power models, don't output a RGB sync source natively. This is a problem, so this leads to the majority of the cheaper end cables on the market using sync on composite video, which provides all those cross interference issues we've seen with the stair stepping and checkerboarding and other visual anomalies. So the solution is these consoles also output S video. So we can take the intensity and luminance information, which also can be used as a sync source for RGB. So this leads us on to Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Super Nintendo Power Model. And we have Composite Video on the left and RGB Sync on Luma on the right. 
So as you can see straight off, there is no checkerboarding and other visual anomalies occurring on screen, on tile screen. As you can see, there's no issues there at all on the RGB sync on Luma. So this leads into the demo fight. As you can see, we've got a nice crisp RGB output there, and no issues at all. So as with the PAL Super Nintendo, we have the same issue with requiring RGB Sync on Luma for the PAL Sony PlayStation. So here we have composite video on the left and RGB Sync on Luma on the right, and the difference between the two is quite staggering, as is the amount of detail loss on the composite video output. So here we have Ridge Racer High Spec Demo on the Sony PlayStation, with composite video output on the left and RGB Sync on Luma output on the right. Now the difference in detail isn't as dramatic when it comes to full motion 3D with the composite video just looking just slightly blurred but what we have to consider is that detail is already lost so when it comes to outputting on a CRT we're just going to end up with an even blurrier picture than we do currently. Now the real difference at the end of this demo is where it comes to the ranking screen which is just going to pause for a moment and you can actually see the difference in detail between the two and it's quite dramatic. So this brings us to our final demo for the same PlayStation. So we have Gran Turismo 2, we have Composite Video on the left and RGB Sync on Loom on the right. As you can already see the text on the Composite Video output is already blurred. Now the full motion 3D isn't too bad on the composite video, but we have to consider is the dramatic amount of detail loss already that's occurred. So this means that you're going to be outputting a blurry image before it even hits that output device, which is going to create some blur as a result. So the differing effects, as you can see on the RGB Sync on Loom on the road there, they've already been negated by the composite video. Now those tricks are used by the artists and developers to provide a greater amount of detail than what is currently possible in the hardware on your actual output device by using a trick um, to sort of blur the colours together. And that's what have been negated by the composite video, which means we're not going to get the full benefit of that effect on the actual output device. As you can see, the text is already blurred on the composite video as well, which means you're going to end up with an even blurrier text on your output device. So finally for this video we have the modded consoles section. So we have two consoles coming up, both from Nintendo, which only provide composite output in their power configurations, which is very unfortunate. So these require significant modifications with an add-in board to provide a form of RGB SCART. So currently we have the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, with composite video on the left and RGB sync on Lin on the right. So already we can see the composite video has blurred the no controller text and the Zelda logo out quite significantly compared to the RGB Sync on Luma source on the right. So there's quite a lot of blurring that is occurring so we're going to do a slide effect so you can see the difference. Now unfortunately it can't do much about the fog effect which is uh, used quite heavily in the N64 games. So um, we're not seeing as dramatic a difference as with other outputs from other consoles. But you can see um, the, in the background the um, horizon is making quite a big difference. Now, 
unfortunately there is uh, no fix that is reliable for the uh, N64 fog on real hardware I'm afraid. And next up we have Duke Nukem 64 for the Nintendo 64. Uh, we have composite video on the left and RGB sync on Loom on the right. And we can already see a big difference in terms of clarity when it comes to the text on screen for the Duke Nukem 64 logo and the menu text with the composite video being heavily blurred by comparison to the IGV Sync on Lumo output on the right. So as the demo loads up, we can already see the difference in the HUD quality as well, with the composite video being very blurred by comparison. We can see quite a lot of uh, sprite effects as well being heavily blurred compared to the RGB sync clear output on the right. See the bullet flash is on the muzzles of the guns as well. Um, they're quite blurred and very dull on the composite video output compared to the RGB sync on Luma. And again, that is detail you're never going to get back. This brings us to the final set of demonstrations for this video, which is Castlevania 3 on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just a quick side-by-side -side comparison of Tim Worthington's NES RGB board on the right for outputting RGB composite sync versus composite video on the left. Now this next demo of Super Mario Bros. really shows it off. You can see the amount of noise that's been generated in the composite video output versus the RGB composite sync output on the right. It's just phenomenal, really. Um, the amount of difference this board makes to a Nintendo Entertainment System is just staggering. I highly recommend anyone who's got Nintendo Entertainment System seeking out someone who can install this for you if you don't have the ability to do so yourself. As you can see, the um, flames, the amount of pixelation and noise that's been generated in the composite video and on the floor, and you have none of that at all in the RGB composite sync output. Probably my best investment I've ever made in terms of upgrading the uh, picture output quality of a games console. And that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching.